Okay, here I'm starting my second combo spawn. This video is a week old. So when I recorded this, it was before we had the storm come in later that evening. Yep, fun times. So I have my greens there, which is my yard waste. Now I'm adding my browns, which is corrugated cardboard that's been shredded in a paper shredder. Pizza boxes, zero boxes. Yeah, junk mail that's not slick to the touch. Envelopes that have no plastic windows in them. You could also add car, uh, the paper towel holders, cardboard tubes, same thing with the toll paper. Uh, napkins that are lightly used. I've actually added lightly used toll paper that you know that's not soiled. Now you get to the end of the roll. And what else can you add? If you have any carton items that's no longer usable, you can toss those in the compost pile. Basically the rule is, if it's from a plant, it's biodegradable. And what I'm doing here is I'm mixing the materials together, because I'm more worried about the microbes. If you don't, if you want to be more lazy about this, which is perfectly fine, you don't have to miss it. I'm also checking to see if there's any material problems. Like you see some of the materials are already starting to break down. And this will also where you add food scraps, but I use my food scraps for never part of composting, so I do not add those scraps into the piece of heaps. So how I'm going to compensate for that is add artificial fertilizer. Uh, artificial fertilizer so a lot of times they're all purpose uh, this is the on the NPK scale 555 or 10 10 10 so you're gonna see me add both piles and that's a way where I can add nutrients for the microbes to speed up the processes like something like that if I leave that pile alone it'll probably take three to five years or longer, because it's what we call code composting. It's the reason why you want the piles to be over 100 degrees. It just works a lot quicker. Instead of taking many years, it takes up to a year. Now there's ways you can speed up the processes, but that's not important for now. If you want to learn about, more about that, there's tons of videos on other channels that will provide that. And here I'm adding the fertilizer. And it's not uncommon, especially for organic gardeners, when they run into problems like the, this that I'm experiencing, where I just don't have a very... I don't have a lot in combos going on, so I will artificially stimulate it with some fertilizer. And just think of it, you're just adding nutrients into the pile. So that's a way where I can raise, make the environment more favorable or hospitable for the microbes. This is what we refer to as the FBI agents in composting. F is for fungal. B is for the bacteria and the eyes for invertebrates. And right now you're going to see the bacteria stays of it with the heat. Then it leads into the fungal. Then towards the end you see more of the invertebrates would be the earthworms, uh, pill bugs, those type of insects. And that's perfectly natural. Because think of it this way, what how does the far survive because it doesn't get fertilized? The, using these methods. And this is the end result. Well, it's a good way to tell. The more refined compost is, the less it resembles the materials it came from. And I should have a worm coming up here. I believe I found a worm. Uh, there it is. Like you see, there's already the oil in there. So you already see this material is ready to go. What's at this stage is a perfect mulch. Even if you let it refine all the way down, 
where it looks like actual dirt, you can still use that as a mulch. This is a soil amendment. It's not a very high fertilizer. You may get like a point one. Mm -hmm. And do not worry about, you know, it's a certain ratio. Everyone's compost is different because it's a reflection of the house. Everyone's diet is different. There's nothing wrong with that. And believe it or not, I actually have that, that compost as mulch with a, between a one to two inch mulch with a few plants out in the garden right now. Now the bad news about the compost fall, it needs a lot of water. I believe about off the top of the head about 60%, 65% content. So since I don't have a hose long enough, one of my what I will do to compensate is I will go get a bucket, five gallon bucket, and just walk it back and forth. If you have a hose long enough, a lot of people will just stick a hose in there, run the water, add the material as the water is running, and they just remove the hose. Like there's my uh, warm bins right there. This is where my food scraps go. And generally speaking, it's always a good idea to have a central spot for your uh, tools. And this is all I'm going to be doing for the next several minutes is walking back and forth. So if you want to fast forward, now would be a good time to do so. And I will keep commentary just in case. And if you're wondering about why I have so many bins, this is like a stays, excuse me, a stays area. Like I will use, for example, you would see the sticks at the end of the line, where you're seeing very unrefined stuff in the earth machine. This is the bell safe item. These trash cans are my work hose. And you see, I'm just trying to find more materials here. Then, as it farther gets refined, it goes down the line to that last item, which is a spinner. Which that's a way to help enhance the processes. But that's only if you have the recipe correct. And don't worry about having a correct recipe right now. Just because it's a little slower, it'll still compost. If it's dry, it'll still compost. And this tail's a lot slower. <laughs> And as you see, this is just me going back and forth, back and forth. But hey, I don't have to pay for this water, this rainwater. Now I'm just, you know, because I'm waiting for water, I'm just glancing to see if there's any problems that's popping up. Get to see a little bit of the uh, yard. There's the garden, which no longer looks quite that way since we had uh, the 100 mile hour winds come through so that later that evening. Yeah, fun times. Surprisingly, it didn't have too much damage. But so I would recommend if you can get a hose long enough, a long hose, do so. It'll make your life a little easier. Now with the water, you don't want to go too crazy in the water because you want this to smell a very earth-like or a hezzy smell like you're in the woods. If you got in the woods and you pulled away like a couple inches of the top of the litter on the ground and you get a whiff of that, sm that smell, that earth smell, that's what you want to smell like. If you open it up and you want to take a step back and you go, phew, like, for example, if you ever open up a bag full of wet glass clippings, you want to just take a woof, almost want to take it back. That is what happens when it has not enough oxygen, what we call anaerobic conditions. That leads to methane production. Methane is an energy source for a lot of microbes. It is also a very important greenhouse gas. 
Now something that small you don't have to worry about. Good news if you have those conditions, open up the bin for a few days, it'll correct itself. So this gets a little tedious when you're walking back, but hey, I get my exercise. And I'm checking this water fountain, this to see if because I just put a new pump in there to so see if there's anything else. I noticed the water level's a little low, so I'm going to add water to that. I will get more a more detailed uh, video about that later. So there's a reason why I have a water fountain out here. I'll still be adding some water. Part of the reason why I'm adding in water is because I put that fertilizer in the piles and that is a salt based item meaning it needs liquid to be able to break apart the pellets so that the atoms or the element or atoms whatever you want to call it can be readily absorbed. That's the reason why I'm adding so much water. So by all means, fast forward. If you don't want to, if you want to skip to the end. And by the way, that greenhouse is no longer there thanks to the nine hundred, up to a hundred mile hour winds. So I think somebody's trying to tell me not to have a greenhouse. The reason why I took a step back is I'm trying to size up how much water I need. You can already see how much water I've been using. It takes a lot of water. Now don't don't be surprised if you start a pile up. You do the proper steps, you come back the next day and you see it drop considerably. Because you know, all the processes are doing is taking the material, reducing them to smaller particles, and instead of resembling like a leaf, that leaf now becomes, if you will, compost, then it turns into topsoil. So it's basically turning into dirt. So by definition, it shrinks. That's the reason why I call those two trash cans, which is my bin number two and three. My workhorses because they can just keep, they have more favorable conditions for the microbes than, say, that unit there. This is why it's more of my cold composter. I will allow it to do the composting, then I just move it down the line, just like a conveyor belt. That way I can get, I can have different stages of compost. One that's, for example, done. Here's one that's still being refined, but it, I can use it as a mulch. There was another band that's just starting, and so forth and so on, so I just keep it cycling. Instead of having an operation where, okay, it's the end of the year, my compost is done, and I don't have nothing. You see, here's my yard waste. And that's what I'm going to add to the pile. We're almost done. 
but this does get a little tedious. Uh, if you are dumping like that, this be enough. This be uh, forewarned. You may have a lot of materials get that miss the uh, miss the gap and end up on the ground. So if you don't want to pick up materials, go slow. Now at this point, I say, like, I found a rock in there. Don't be surprised to find different things in there that doesn't belong. So you can compost your rocks. This is going to take several decades, if not centuries. You see how I missed some of that? Now what I'm doing is packing it down. Trying to deal with the uh, hole so it doesn't have too much air gaps. You see how much room I'm already getting back in by squishing or compacting. Now, preferably, that's going to take about a year for that missing that type of bin to work. So at this point, I'm done. I don't have to worry about that for another year except for just adding water. Add some water, I'm done. Now, if you want to speed up the processes, you will actually move that from bin to bin to bin. Which I will sew later when I get to that step. But that's pretty much, or rather, that is a compost in the entire thing. There's my dad wanting to check out the beehive. And there's Ben. He can't have a, can't have a video about the pup. Yeah. I decided I need to get one more bucket in that compost pile, but this is this is the compost in a nutshell. Your materials are two parts brown to one part green. In a standard home, residential home like mine, that is filled up. You're not going to get the recommended oil. heat. Don't worry about that. So you know, I always say 100 degrees is fair. You're going to produce a lot more browns than you do greens. And there's the beehive. But it's a great way to save some money. Don't get me wrong. That it, I've saved a lot of financial money by not having to buy molds. By converting my waste into mulch, this is adding back into the soil. This is improving the soil conditions, which means I do not have to water as much. So when I'm in a hot, dry day, I know it doesn't take as much water as it would normally. Now, depending where you're at, or Stinson office would have more information on this, or and or classes with the master gardeners. There's something else to look into if you're wanting to go down this route. Eventually, I will have more detailed videos coming out once I find my footing. I'm still testing what works for me, so forth and so on. So this is going through some growing pains. But for those of you that have st stuck and stayed, thanks for watching. If you want to leave a comment, tell me what you think or have suggestions, by all means.
the roulette over there.